So this is a demonstration of highlighting the actual pilot version of the application. After scanning the room and placing the model in your space, the first thing the user encounters is this image of South Florida. The locations of each stop on the field trip are shown as circular icons, which expand to show the site name when hovering over each icon with the control ray. For starters, let's look at the coral reef site. This site is located in the Dry Tortugas National Park, near Fort Jefferson. Water depth at this location is about 10 feet. The most striking feature here is a large thicket of Acropora cervicornis, also known as staghorn coral. There are also two colonies at this location of a related species in the same genus, Acropora palmata, known commonly as elkhorn coral. Both so a description has been prepared for each site, which by default appears as text in a pop-up box and a voiceover audio. These are user-controlled settings. Audio can be turned abundance. off, for example. Interacting with the site can be done by moving closer or further Florida, away, um, walking around the model, or rotating the model to view it at different here. angles. Several large colonies of another Caribbean reef builder called Orbicella annularis, the Boulder Star Coral, are also present at this site. The models have more detail than can be shown when a viewed at their overall extent. So we developed a way to zoom to a higher resolution by clicking on hotspots. In, in this case, to inspect a thicket of Acropora cervicornis, staghorn coral. Standards. Like the model of the full morphology. site, there is informational text, and the model can be rotated for easy inspection such as from this all as known angles. As a thicket. Due to their complex spatial structure, thickets are important habitat for many reef fish and other benthic invertebrate animals. Note that, on one side of the thicket, some branches have broken off and are lying on the seabed. This type of fragmenting is common for staghorn coral. If the fragmented pieces are not buried by sand too rapidly, they will grow and propagate the thicket. To exit the detail model, click back, which brings you back to this individual site. And then to exit a given site, we can click home, which takes you back to the overview map. Next, let's look at the Montgomery Botanical Center, which is the site of our terrestrial outcrop. This site is part of the Miami Oolite Sand Body, which extends from Fort Lauderdale in the north to Homestead in the south. The overall length, or strike extent, for the Miami Oolite is over 100 kilometers, whereas the dip width averages 10 to 15 kilometers. This deposit of oolitic sand was laid down 125,000 years ago when sea level was approximately 6 meters higher than present, sufficiently high to flood the majority of South Florida, such that the peninsula So the interface like here the is the Bahamas same as the coral today. example, with the ability that to pop up information about notable features in the site, and also currents. to rotate the model to view it from different angles. This part of the outcrop contains excellent examples of well-sorted, cross-bedded oolitic grainstone facies. Cross-bedding is prevalent in the high energy of the barrier bar, whereas bioturbated facies are dominant It's actually in the remarkable how channel, much detail is retained in this These model and how much you can see when you trip. get right up close to look at it. A line of small caves is visible on the front of the outcrop so-called wave cut notches these caves were cut by waves breaking on the outcrop likely shortly after sea level began to drop approximately 100,000 years ago as the outcrop was gradually exposed by the retreating coastline returning to the overview map we'll now take a look at the site for the wreck of the half moon the idea here is the same, although we did experiment with a few animated design elements, such as the graphic here at the start of the sinking ship. 
We'll see if users find Half value moon in lies that. Half embedded in white sand on a shallow shoal off Key Biscayne, listing slightly to port, bow pointing southward. No traces of her masts are left, and the starboard side has been broken outward, probably the result of a larger vessel colliding with the wreck. Once you're in the model, however, the it's the same concept as apparent, the other sites. You can view and rotate the model. Collar. There are also detailed, high-resolution subsections the years, of the model the that can be viewed Kaiser by Cup clicking on one of the hotspots. The Within a given hotspot, over time, there are more hotspots with the extra information. Life, including fish, invertebrates, sponges, and corals. So here, for example, we pull up a higher resolution version model of the of the bow, and the bow then is the get additional the information Several features about are specific still visible features. On the half moon. A portion of the deck remains near the bow, which is a testament to the longevity of teak wood in the marine environment. final point to make is that we expect eventually to integrate many sites from numerous contributors so there's a clear location with the app to give credit and citations as needed in closing I'll summarize that we have a working demo for phase one of our project we plan to use it this semester to get feedback and to refine it and as you can see here, we've identified potential end users both within and outside the University of Miami. Looking forward, we hope to continue to refine and add content to the phase one platform, as well as to begin to implement phase two of this project. Please contact me with any questions. And finally, thanks to Magic Leap and the Provost Office for supporting this work. And of course, thanks to the excellent project team who helped us get as far as we have in just a very short time. Thank you for your attention.